Welcome to the Tourism Hub podcast, a podcast devoted to you and your excellence, providing inspiration and education for the entrepreneurs, experience makers and excellent seekers of our industry to take your tourism business and career to a whole new level. Welcome to episode 46 of the Tourism Hub podcast brought to you by the Institute of Excellence and and the Australian Regional Tourism Network. Today we're celebrating something really special. The art convention is just around the corner and we are also launching an exciting new partnership with the Australian Regional Tourism Network. In this episode, we're throwing it back to some incredible interviews I conducted last year with legends of the Australian tourism industry. You'll hear from Peter Freeman of Wolf Media, my sister Liz Ward from Tourism Tribe, Sarah O'Mara from Flair Access, and Meryn Ozols from Fluro Peninsula Tourism and so many more. It's an episode packed with Australian regional tourism goodness. So sit back, relax and enjoy. Now, before we dive into the conversations, though, it's time to announce the winner of the coveted golden ticket, granting full registration to join me and the art team around the country in Mackay for the 2024 Australian Regional Tourism Convention. Drum roll, please. The winner is Melissa Sauter Robertson. Melissa is the tourism and marketing coordinator at the Shire of Collie in Western Australia. Isn't it amazing how LinkedIn and social media brought us together from Melbourne to WA? And now we're going to meet and hang out in Mackay next week. Congratulations, Melissa. I loved your video and I just can't wait to hang out together next week. Some fun, fun times ahead. So without further ado, let's jump into this special episode of the Tourism Hub podcast. Our final artful chat, Sarah O'Mara from Flair Access. Thank you for agreeing to come and join and just it's a good opportunity to unpack. We are fully loaded Mm. with some great, I mean, we just had the most amazing panel session from a real Newcastle um, blend of tourism operators doing great things in this region. And uh, it was amazing to see in that exchange of one of them operators, Coastal XP and Dom, coming to you and Mm. saying from your session and what you do at Flair Access has had a great impact in his business and the way he does things. So that's the first question. Tell us about Flair Access and how you support regional tourism businesses, communities and destinations around the country. Mm. Thanks. Yeah, it was so exciting to have Dom approach and to share that really good outcome for him. So um, Flair Access specialises in accessible tourism consulting and we support operators, RTOs, STOs to create accessible destinations. So through training, mentoring, um, access consulting, Uh, to really develop accessible and inclusive customer experiences with the goal to develop accessible destinations. So not just developing one-off accessible operators because we want to really extend a person's stay or or visit in, in a location. So to create accessible destinations and to support operators to learn how to develop accessible tourism experiences. Um, Operators specialise in what they're offering, whether that's in hospitality or tours or boat tours or bike tours like we were seeing earlier. That's what they they get excited about and that's what they specialise in. And we really focus on making it easy to make an accessible customer experience because it can feel a bit overwhelming yes um and so we really try and make it as simple and digestible as possible for operators because it's such an important space to develop um and to see dom come up and share so we ran um in partnership with the city of newcastle uh, must have been about two years ago now, ran a webinar on the benefits of accessible tourism and and how to get started and to see 
uh, two years on that he's made all these changes to his customer experience and provided all this information on his website and um, really embraced that was really, really exciting to see. Oh, it was exciting for me yeah. to see as educators in this space when you have that feedback and you see he's, yeah, someone that's really had a, yeah, incredible growth mm. and that you've, you've made a difference in business. So congratulations. Yeah, thank you. That's yeah. uh, some excellent work. Mm. And like we were saying earlier, we met at the first Australian Accessible Conference mm -hmm. this year mm -hmm. in 2023. Yeah, first in and person. First in person, yeah. yes, event and conference. And I just yeah. feel like we have made, we've, we're in that second phase of momentum yes. in accessible tourism. Yes. Yes. yes, it's so exciting to see how um, the industry ha has shone such a spotlight on accessible tourism and I'm feeling the shift now. RTOs, SUs, the industry as a whole, operators, now they're understanding that the, the value in it, the benefit that it is good for business, it's an economic strategy that they can incorporate. We're understanding that now that there's economic benefit. Now we're moving on to, so what do we do about it? How do we make those changes? We're moving from the why is it important to the how do we do it? And that's a really exciting transition because now we can really focus on supporting operators, supporting organisations and destinations to incorporate accessible features. And to see that transition, I'm having less conversations and, and running less workshops now on why it's important and really work, working on step what to do. Uh, so it's so exciting to see that within um, you know, the 12 months, it, I mean, it was just earlier this year, that, yes. that April, <laughs> it was know, a long time ago, but it's exciting Yeah, to it really has been. Mm. I, I'm curious, your journey into Flare Access, mm. tell me about how Sarah's come to be a real e expert in this space, your why. Yeah, my why is my family with disability. So I have family who are neurodivergent and also wheelchair users, and I... Uh, I'm an occupational therapist by background. So I work with people with disability to increase their independence in their day to day. And I was living overseas, I was in London at the time and was speaking to my uncle who uses a wheelchair. And I was sharing how I just booked a trip. I think it was on the Thursday and I was going out on this, the Saturday. So I was able to just jump online, book something and fly out. And I was speaking to him and he was really excited. He was booking a trip to move up to, to travel overseas uh, through the UK and Europe and he had to plan seven months in advance because it was so hard to book accessible experiences and hearing seeing that firsthand and seeing it even on his day-to-day -day when we go out to family dinners and the the effort that it takes to to book accessible experiences I just something that I took for, take for granted and I love the idea that not everyone can experience these these incredible experiences that as a as an operator you're offering a service because you're excited about it you're passionate about it and you want everyone to experience yes. that and to have barriers to people with disability and, and, and others with access needs um, I just thought there's got to be a better way so I entered accessible tourism and I am so so passionate about seeing the change towards greater inclusion it's it's a journey it's um you know one day we might see accessible design for everyone and and, and everything but we're not there yet so the idea of just doing what we can and supporting operators and to create accessible destinations to just do what we can um because like i said we we want everyone to experience the beauty of our of our destination the beauty of our beaches the beauty of our experiences and so often barriers are in place that can be removed and it's just having that awareness so often i'll go out somewhere and i'm just like oh if they just made this change it would just be so yes. much more accessible and and often it's just those small changes that really make a difference um and i'm i, I love seeing the shift in the industry now it's very very exciting is that difficult when you see something as a you know just as a consumer mm. 
yeah. to not say something? Like, how do you take that approach? <laughs> you just go, oh, yeah, yeah. I guess it's something like mystical. Yeah. It is hard. Yeah. It is. I see it every, like, you must see, I yeah, just see it's access con- Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there are yeah. ways. Sometimes I will just approach a person. If, I, if there is a owner or operator or decision maker around and I might just make a suggestion here and there and often they're very open to hearing that feedback and other times um you know I recognize there's a bit of work and education to be done but it's um it is hard but we're seeing we're seeing shifts we're seeing changes we're seeing operators now having a willingness to make change yes which is really yes positive and I love that observation that you've made it's gone more from even in the work that you're doing to just keep like the why the why the benefit to now like there's readiness and mm-hmm. openness mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, to say, okay, we're ready, let's let's go, let's do it, let's start to take these actions towards yes. it. Peter Freeman, uh, Wolf Media, thank you. Thank you for always showing up and travelling the distance from your home in Canada. Do my best. You do your best. And, uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right. and, and very different weather, right? Very much so. It was nine degrees when I left. Wow. It was 34 today out there. It was so. so much to unpack with you. You're an Australian, a regional Australian tourism uh, ambassador. Yes. You're a digital brother in arms with myself and the team at Tourism Tribe. We'll start with Wolf Media, I think, and just the work that you've been able to deliver and, you, and the strong connection that you still hold, even though your family and lives abroad, you're still very much tied in and 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 have a business that's very much regionally australian focused so if you just talk to that a little bit yeah well i guess the why regional i mean i i grew up on a farm in regional south australia uh spent some time in regional victoria so i have a very strong personal connection to regional australia regional communities so i think once that's in your blood it's really hard to step away from that even moving internationally which i blame my wife for that we moved back to her, <laughs> her hometown 10 years ago but Having been part of Wolf Media at that point, we decided to, to give the whole remote work thing a crack, and uh, to, 10 years later, we're still doing it. Um, and, and through that process, we evolved our business to niche down in regional tourism. So at that stage, we weren't specifically niched in tourism, and we've gone through a process over the last 10 years to, to really do that. And that's opened us up beyond just South Australia, where, where we started, and we're now working with destinations and businesses right across Australia, but specifically in regional tourism. So that's our, very much our passion, our, our niche. Even before your time in remote working, yes. right? <laughs> yeah, like and, and making it work mm. when it's uh, now that it's very much part it's of our long, lives yeah. and it's the norm. So you made it work from a long mm. time ago. Now, and what you do at Wolf and what I've always loved and respected about your work, Peter, is that it's beyond, it's it's so much more than delivering a sexy website. Yeah, and, that, and that's part of what we do, but it's it, and I have a like a philosophical aspect to that in trying to make more of a success out of something and just designing something pretty, handing it over and then saying, job's done. Um, and we were talking about that yesterday on, on our table. We had the table talks with, yes. with the groups and we were specifically talking about Google Analytics and the role of measuring success of your websites. And that's really part of that early discussion we have with our clients, whether it's a destination or a tourism operator. What what are you trying to get out of the website from a business perspective? Because at the end of the day, technology is great. There's all this cool tech that we can implement, but if it's not delivering business outcomes or growth or whatever whatever the objective is every de- destination every business is slightly different in terms of what it needs to do um but we start with that discussion what what's the end goal and then we work back uh, from that so important mm. to know what what yeah what does success look like yeah. and what we want to achieve and going just speaking to that your round table as an art ambassador mm. that you held with the delegates yesterday around your table uh, there was a focus on analytics. Mm-hmm. What is challenging organisations and businesses and people at the moment around this change from Universal yeah. to Google Analytics for? Yeah, I'm not sure I'll ever forgive Google for yeah, messing it all up for us, but I, I, I think there's been such a this Universal Analytics has been around for 15, 20 years or whatever it's been. So there's a lot of assumed 
knowledge in that space and then it's such a big change but probably more visible things technically to, to a lot of organizations so reporting and data is something that typically a, a destination might be sending monthly or quarterly reports to their stakeholders so to have all of that upended it creates a lot of uncertainty and a lot of fear i guess of yeah can we still track the same things measure the same things so i mean a lot of the concerns and challenges and lived experience this year with with the, the big shift um a lot of destinations particularly that, that that lost a bit of confidence in their yeah. reporting and their analytics and in some cases they haven't had good partnerships with whether it's an agency or the web developer or whoever who's who was good at building websites but not necessarily good at the analytics and reporting side and translating that into a way that when you're measuring things in google analytics 4 you need a very clear structure of what you're reporting how you're reporting it and then Basically, you need to create that. So creating yes. that structure so you can then report. Um, so while you can still track things like how many visitors and which pages they viewed, if you want to do the important things on, and report for a destination, for example, and want to report on lead generation to operators, which is a super important metric. Um, as an RTO, for example, you need to be able to go back to your board and back to your operator members um, and say, we generated X number of leads to you guys this month. All of that has to be manually created now to, yeah. to track all of that off of your website. So a lot of people grappling with that, struggling with that, trying to find the expertise to do it. Um, I know Tourism Tribe has a lot of expertise in that with training operators. Um, we've certainly helped a lot of destinations in it's rebuilding some of that reporting, yes. but it's it's very new. And I think where most destinations struggle, particularly regionally, is they've got one or two staff at most typically in marketing that wear all the hats so product development through to marketing and they're expected to, to take care of a lot of this yeah uh, within their current role and it's a huge learning curve for them it really is and that's what we went through that technical capability so my own journey as a solo person it was quite universal was not as complicated and i got really used to my reporting it was just a set and a bit of yeah, a really. yeah but we found through this journey, even with with, our, with Tourism Tribe, even with our tech guru, Fabian, it was a journey. Yeah. Like there was actually a lot of customization that was required. Yes. And I would highly recommend everybody, if that's just not your genuine, to, yeah, reach out. And, Definitely uh, look for help. Yeah. And, and there's certainly, yeah, resources out there, but a lot of resources are even one of the questions I had yesterday was, does Google have some resources that can help? And I mean, they certainly have resources and they're very generic. So when you're looking at tailoring your reporting in tourism, there's very specific things that are important to you, like leads to operators, like engagement. And that doesn't exist in the Google documentation. So there's, and that's, I guess that's where Tourism Tribe, ourselves, others in this space have that technical expertise, but also the tourism experience to know how to mesh the two together and get yes. the outcomes. And that's, that's where, yeah, there's a lot of good results we're getting with some of our clients with dashboarding and, and various things to make that simpler. Yes. They don't have to go and look at all the techie data. They just look at a nice, simple monthly dashboard and it gives them what they need. What they need yeah. that's customised to their needs. Because yes. this is the thing, I mean, even in our little side chat earlier today, it's the, the concept of visitation, of human visitation, we've gotten really good mm -hmm. with, like the Tourism Research Australia or you know that's some it's an important metric but we're still not even google 4 or google universal google it's just something we haven't really prioritized that that's the beginning mm -hmm. visitation to the to our websites i think whether you're an rto a state government or you know small tourism business we have to start measuring that yeah and that's a good metric for success isn't mm -hmm. it because okay this many people have come to our website mm -hmm. to booking so exactly yeah. and even even beyond that what are they engaging with? Like one of the, the metrics, a lot of our destination sites for regional clients are integrated with ATW, of course. So you want to understand if they're looking at a, a list of accommodation businesses, how are they engaging with those businesses on the page? So it's one thing to know that, okay, we've got 100 visitors to this page, but it's also nice to know, okay, we've got 100 visitors to the page, but 20 people clicked on the, the view map link. So there's engagement there that, 
isn't necessarily a lead, but it's more than just looking at the page. Like they oh. actually engage with the page and we know which part of the page they engage with and which part of the listings and that sort of thing. So it doesn't solve all your problems, but having more awareness of what's happening with the visitor experience, it helps you understand their journey a little bit more that, okay, if everyone's looking at the map listings, maybe or the, the map section of a listing, maybe a little bit more information in our visitor guide or in our social media around where to find certain businesses, top accommodation in a certain category, that sort of thing. It's, it's gold. It, it, it is. It's it, gold it, in it's my in, microphone. Set, yeah. It's insight. In so you don't need, need to wonder or leave mm. things to chance. It's all there. And that's freely available. Like, it's a it free is. thing. A little bit of work you, to set it up. Yeah, that's right. It's a little bit of cost, obviously, uh, yeah. if you're engaging someone like ourselves to do it. But yes. it's done. It's not an ongoing, As you have tool. to reinvent it every yeah. quarter or anything. It's just there. That leads me to, I mean, it, it just that sparks like that conversation around like using data intelligence mm -hmm. to then what content. I read something yes. just this morning around Google prioritising that your existing content could be hurting your SEO. So sometimes even if you've got data now, they're yeah. getting so, they're honing in on the user experience as much really? as we should be. And they're saying, well, if you've got dated things that are not, going to serve our users to come to you, mm -hmm. you're going to be penalised. Yeah. Well, I think that with the level of data that Google captures on your site through analytics, obviously, I mean, what they show us is only a small percentage of obviously what they're capturing in the background. And yeah. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of what they capture with visitors to your site, it's helping them improve search indexing, search results, getting better results. Because obviously, I mean, I'm not going to keep using Google if it gives me rubbish data yeah, when, every yeah. time I search. So it's in their best interest to give me what I'm looking for. And obviously, with the impact of AI and a few other things, there's challenges with yes. how we're presenting that data. But one of, the, one of the key insights that came out of a chat around the table yesterday was there's all this, I guess, fear and concern around AI. So I'm very justified, of course, and you talked about it in your yes. session. But AI tools still have to get the information from somewhere. And that somewhere is the internet, and that internet is where your website is. So your website is still extremely important. There's often the, I guess, the big scare tactics of, oh, yes. websites are going to be dead in five years. And I think it's how we structure them, how we present the information, maybe how we're indexing the information in yes. different ways yes. to improve the user experience. That'll become more important, I think, because that's something Google's looking at. But a website as a trusted source of information i think and it's not going away anytime soon it's really just what we're emphasizing on those sites yeah. and how we're how we're presenting the information whether it's faqs on a destination as indian restaurants in newcastle or something like that making sure we're presenting that information in a really easy to use way that google can then grab that or chat gpt or whichever system we're using neural link plugged into our more. brain I'm or whatever it is I but... agree more because it's the trusted source mm. and i always look at it as real estate yes like that's your own you own real estate yeah. that what you put in there as a trusted mm. authority whether you're the destination or as a business as, yeah. a, as a tourism business from a content perspective what can we do like how can we improve that i think we've still we're quite now mm. consistency or seeing this practice example of just not having just a digital brochure in our yeah. website, something that's got more pulse mm -hmm. and look at it in the same way that Google is looking yeah. at theirs as our businesses. Absolutely. Um, can you talk to that or how you're helping your clients with mm -hmm. just maintaining a level of content creation? It's tough, but I, and I think there's certainly some challenges with that with AI tools as well, because obviously AI makes things a little bit easier in some areas, but the quality of content we're getting back from those tools yeah. is not great. We still yeah. need that human component, the human filter uh, yeah. you and Liz mentioned. Yes. Um, I think it comes back to really understanding your target customer, ideal visitor, whatever persona, yeah. yes. profile, yes. All, all the names we call them, but ultimately it's, it's the person you're talking to. So yeah. you're not designing a page for Google. You're not creating content for Google, you're creating content for the person who's using Google to find it and oh. answering their questions. So coming back to that, if, you, if you're not, whether you're a business or a destination, it really doesn't matter. Understanding who the person is that's coming through your door, whether you're a visitor information center or you're running a tour or you're trying to attract new visitors to your destination, you need to know what they're looking for at that yes. point in their journey. Yes. Um, and then serving that up to them in a way that's easy to use, easy to 
share is yes. a bookmark. And obviously you'd, you'd post that on social media and, and whatnot, but our, our experience with all of the sites that we run is organic Google search, Bing, all the rest of it is usually 80 plus percent of the people coming to your site are finding you through some sort of search, whether it's Google directly or yes. Siri or whoever. Yeah. Yet a lot of the effort that goes into content is often on social media, which is hugely important. Don't get me wrong, but it's not balanced in my view in terms of the value of creating content that will sit on your website and reap rewards for you for years versus something you post on Instagram stories. It's there, it's gone. It might, it might sit in your gallery on Instagram. People will trip over it, but value for your destination and your business, I think it's very much favoring content on your website that's really well structured. And I, I think we struggle with that because it does take more time, potentially more cost. You do need to, yes. even if you're generating something through ChatGPT, for example, you still need a skilled writer who understands your audience to yes. mold that into something that's, yeah. that, that's actually helpful, not just a whole bunch of words. So you've yeah. copied out of a robot to pop on the page and think it's done. Um, so it all comes back to the fundamental principle of tourism, really. It's, it's the visitor experience, the user experience. It's no different to someone coming through your front door at a visitor information centre. You want to help them get to the next step, book the next tour, package things up. Yes. Treating your digital visitors the same way with the same care is super important. I think we tend to get a little bit lazy and mm. just posting stuff up online and, and hoping for the best sometimes. Yes, and not just... seeing that as holistically it's mm -hmm. that that's that journey and this is this journey yeah it's offline kind of all... offline yeah online, offline yes. and separating that is very much now it's, yeah i'm offline today tomorrow i'm online yeah all the way through yeah um i'll walk past the sign down the main street of newcastle i'll go check something out and then i'll be back on google maps looking for the next place and i'll catch another cafe oh, yeah I'll go check that yeah. place out so it's, yeah. it's very much that merging of online and offline and making sure that the level of experience is consistent yes, across both. That consistency. I couldn't agree with more. Like, agree more with you because that is something. Like, back to that, like prioritizing, valuing, and respecting mm -hmm. your websites in the same your, way yeah. as our destination. Yeah, that is part of the story. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, like yeah. that's not owned media. The social media. Mm -hmm. It's still not. That's not our property. We don't know those relationships. That community Absolutely. there. Um, and that's why, that's why we go, you know, at Greek restaurants and have, you know, Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> in Melbourne yeah. together. We could talk about this for <laughs> days. And that's another, I guess, just with it, you mentioned there, I think that's been another big shift in the Google space of the maps now with Google mm -hmm. My Business to Google Business Profile that yes. it's very much centred around location. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. So um, all good things to, to, to be on top of and maintain and be consistent with mm -hmm. it. Thank you for being here. You're very welcome. Newcastle. It is. Which I'm is loving it. yeah, loving it. What if, what's yeah. the, we were talking about city and change yeah. change mode, it's very much evolving. And such a contrast going up and down even even the foreshore and you've got the ports in the background and then all these funky new restaurants yeah. popping up on the foreshore here. Yes, beautiful. Uh, some key takeaways this year for you to finish up. Mm. What has been some key things that you'll take away back to the team in SA and Canada? Oh, I think one of, well, one of the more exciting ones was Jan's presentation this morning on ATDW and their journey. Yeah. Um, excellent. I got the acronym right. I always <laughs> trip over that one like everyone else. But, but I think that's that's super exciting because yeah. we work a lot with ATDW. We're distribution yes. uh, partner in terms of implementing it on websites and i think it's exciting that that whole technological change and and just the principles they're changing with yes that's well, the principles that are guiding that uh, transition for them it's very much focused on supporting industry getting outcomes for industry making it easier for them more support which is i mean they're, they're all values that we live by ourselves in terms yes. of the way we treat our clients as well so i think it's exciting times in terms of what will be available and i mean it's a, yes. a world-leading platform talking to oh. destinations in canada and, and explaining them or explaining to them about atdw and they're just green with envy because it's like, 
Well, we, yeah, we've got all these little siloed systems, whereas Australia, yes, it has challenges which they're working through, but that national database of dollar tourism information that we can all work with and distribute and get in front of people, I think it's it's a real asset. Just stuff of envy it is. from around. Yeah, it, is. it was an excellent presentation. I mean, mm. the most anticipated. Yeah. Left us all hanging. I've been really, you know, window. shout out to <laughs> Haley from you know, I've been receiving texts. Is it out? Have they announced it? <laughs> yes, you know, just be so. Um, thank you. So I'm glad we got got nailed you down here. Got, got here this year, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, look forward to seeing you again next year. Safe travels home to your family. Yes. And uh, a few we'll... detours to South Australia before I go and catch up yeah. with a few, few of the team over there. And... That's the next job. Oh, you're not, of next course. Stop. Yeah, you, you haven't been to I'm still jet lagged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You've yeah, you done pretty well, actually. No, not too bad. Yeah. yeah a few, few naps here. It's a big one. It's, mm. yeah. Yeah, 20 hours of flying. So it's a long way. It's a long way. Well, we're glad you make the trip. But Art, uh, thank you for all of your support to the art community. And Very just welcome. to, yeah, for as a, you know, and also just really elevating and being an ambassador for just how much digital can uh, we can use as an enabler for mm. good things that we want to achieve um, so well done congrats on everything see Thanks you again <laughs> thank you everyone for watching live and the replay um i'll see you. as you can see it's quietened down that's the last lunch, lunch of the, the the lunch rush is gone but um and hopefully i can get some more artful chats for you before we sunset at this year's convention thanks peter thanks, Eddie. I've just bumped into this lovely lady here, Paula Freeman from Visit Rural, telling me she's just launched her new business last week and we had to have a chat about it. Welcome. Thank you for agreeing thank you. to do this live Thanks interview. Thanks for having me. <laughs> My Great. absolute pleasure. Paula, tell me about Visit Rural and your journey here because tourism industry hasn't been part of your, your career or your work life. No. <laughs> and I'm so curious to find out how we landed on Visit Rural. Well, it was actually through my husband working with um, several councils in Queensland. And um, he just realised as he was driving through the regions uh, and trying to book on the go, um, he, you know, he, has to, he had to go to quite a few different sites to plan and book that journey. And so he realised there's not actually sort of one site where he, where he could do that. And and then we realised after taking a bit of a wider look at it and researching, it's like, well, what if I am a tourist, you know, coming from, you know, somewhere else in Australia, I've got to, I've got to book my tours, I've got to book my accommodation, uh, maybe I want to see an event um, in Queensland or anywhere in rural Australia. I have to go to like a dozen different websites to do that. And we thought, what if we, what if we had it all in one website, um, you can, you know, package your own little holiday, um, you know, and, you know, however many people you want going on that holiday with you and you do it your holiday your way and it's just one shopping cart with one payment. And so you're minimising your digital footprint as well because my husband's on the road. I'm going to put my credit card details in this one, put my email address here. You get spammed for the next month or two yeah. if you're lucky it's usually longer um so yeah so we thought let's let's do a family friendly tourist friendly website where you know people can go and see our beautiful rural regions and um have a great holiday there and so we actually uh with the marino regional council uh roma region you might be more familiar with um they have beautiful things to see there and so they were the first council to endorse us and put their assets on our site so we're starting very small for our pilot phase at, phase at the moment, um, but then we're going to be opening it up to the rest of regional Queensland and then opening it up nationally January 2024. So we'd love to have any rural operators, whether you're a hotel, a farm stay, uh, you, you can hold events, attraction, um, and you don't have your own platform, or even if you do, jump on we've got our own booking engine and um it's ready to go so yeah. all are phenomenal and you were just saying earlier you've come from an engineering background yes yes yeah, so a different industry <laughs> it is so yeah previously i was a proposal writer uh with some of the engineering firms in brisbane city and um when my youngest son finished school i'm like woohoo i'm out of here and then uh we came up with this idea and uh, and yeah so i've, I've been very 
pleased to join the tourism industry because everybody is so friendly and chatty and you know engineers are lovely but they're not the chattiest people <laughs> so i've really enjoyed the convention uh this year as well it's my first one um and won't be the last one so and won't be the last one would have been i guess as someone very green to the industry yep. not so much in in business but that i'd imagine that there'd be a lot of learnings in your journey because you're saying from a from a software development point of view. Yeah, so I've had to learn the tourism industry and software development to build our website. Uh, we're working with um, a great software developer who used to be the former senior developer at, everyone knows Viator, so yeah. Yeah, we've got him on our team. Um, and yeah, we've, we've got a couple of um, board advisors that have sort of helped track us through the business side of things, uh, making sure we've got all our governance, you'll see all our privacy policy and cookies policy and all the user agreements are all uh, intact in the website there as they should be. Um, and just making sure everything's as smooth as possible, not just for visitors, but for our vendors, for our operators uh, and hotels, because rural, in the rural regions, a, a lot of the it written yeah. in a book. And so yeah. we, we actually, unlike sort of the global uh, booking companies. We actually went on the ground, a three-week tour of the Maranoa Regional Council. We talked with the operators who are mum and dad, operators like my husband and I, and um, we just found out what they wanted and what they needed and what's the easiest way for them to transition from, you know, Britain to digital. And so we're really customer focused that way. And, you know, even yesterday during my break, I was helping someone with their login and stuff. And it's like, yeah, we're really focused on that. And um, really focused on, on just great customer support and just the user experience. I found um, there's a bit of a gap there with, um, you know, the journey actually starts, you know, when you go to book your holiday, not so much when you, you know, you've done all the booking or you've or, you, or yeah. even getting a travel agent to do it can be expensive. This allows you to do it yourself and um, just in the one spot. So, hmm. oh, look at that uh, that multi 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 level approach that you're not only delivering and offering rural experiences. You, I, I'm really loving the niche aspect mm. of this. It's a yeah. booking platform, very yeah. niche to outback and rural experiences and adventures, but you're also providing a really bespoke solution for those suppliers and operators that are, that are in those areas. Yeah, exactly. We, we really are focused on regional um, because there is so much focus on the big ticket items, the cities, our beautiful coastal areas they're, they're taken care of they're in the limelight already we, we've got when we went out back and and did the travel around you know there's the in queensland we have our big ticket items age of dinosaurs Pontus museum tons of other stuff but it it was the journey in between there that we saw there is so much more to see but yeah just getting helping them to move across to go digital so that the whole world can come and see them is is yeah it's oh. a it's a it's been a, a over 12 months in the making and uh, so it's it's a bit surreal sort of coming into oh we just launched our website last week like it's we just pushed a button and it was all ready but no blood sweat and tears the whole way so oh, look, <laughs> but keep, worth keep it going. so worth it We're so i'm sure dedicated. everyone that's watching and, and uh listening live or the replays kind of like preach preach yeah <laughs> i mean i yeah. definitely found your people here yeah. even leading so this is not a convention you were fully aware that's happening no. so you even uh finding and being here was uh, by chance, by chance. <laughs> yeah. what have been some of your takeouts from the from from the learning so far yeah oh the, uh, i've loved all the speakers that have um spoken about things uh where uh, being uh, online and digital where i've been mostly interested in the data and the trends um so those speakers that have spoken on that we've also um used a bit of ai to build our um, website so looking into that technology um, and and very excited to see where the future lands for um, can't say too much without giving things away because we're very <laughs> cutting edge very and we're hoping to disrupt the market in a good way so um, keep an eye out we've got plenty more up the sleeve that you know you might not have uh, expected oh, yes. um, and but but as for the convention sorry didn't make that. Yeah. um yeah definitely it just has it has also emphasized to me 
how important the user experience is and to the, the it's it still seems a bit fragmented if i'm a tourist and i want to book there are definitely great products there to do this that over here here and here but when i start my journey how about if i just had it all in the one spot and so that's emphasized to me that that a, a website like visit rule is definitely needed there is a gap there for our tourists on the first step of their journey to make their way to our beautiful country and especially to our rural region so fantastic this is what i'm loving hearing at this conference there is new new yeah. new people new yeah. thinking yep. new technology yep. and we are all moving in the right direction in a really supportive uh, in, environment when we go here I look forward to seeing you speak next year with the learnings and the launch. You, yeah. Um, yeah not so, but I think it will be a great thing to come together yeah. like in 12 months' time. And yeah, see, we'll see how it will go. Yeah. yeah. And can I just add in, we are an Australian-owned family company, like a lot of our operators. We're not global giants, uh, and we're, we're very um, competitively fee, um, priced as well. Like our costs are very comparable with the market. In fact, they're mostly under, so. Yeah. Yeah. Look, Paola, is it visitrural.com for anyone that's listening to, to, to visit and start checking it out? Yeah, visitrural.com.au. .au, of yes. course. Keep in mind, it's different. a pilot at the moment, so yeah. watch this space as it progresses and, and uh, gets more on there. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to check it out, and I'll be following your journey with great interest. Oh. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you for taking the opportunity to properly you right. launch your business wow. at Art. <laughs> Yes. which is very exciting yes and uh will you be coming returning next year i definitely will and i will bring my husband who is he's you know been my partner in all this so you know, i can't sit here and take all the credit he's yeah him as well Excellent. So, yeah. and what have you thought of newcastle have you visited newcastle? Oh, i yeah i not just dropped into the airport on my way to the hunter valley so to be able to just just have a look i did the walking tour um those girls are crazy for newcastle which i love so it's it's been great I'd, i will come back here i'd love to come back to newcastle and to the convention wherever that may be but yeah definitely love newcastle we'll soon find out yeah. when, when next year's oh, yeah. so we can plan our trips thank you so much all the best nice. for the year ahead and beyond and uh we'll be hearing more hopefully i can get some more because we're starting to sunset the convention hopefully i can get some more artful chats uh, in before we go. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. The most anticipated interview yet. I have been eagerly looking forward to uh, having a conversation, an artful chat with the beautiful Georgia Lazari from the city of Newcastle. Thank you for agreeing to do this. Thank you so much for asking me, Cheryl. I'm delighted to have an artful chat with you. An artful chat here in your own backyard. I can just, the sense of pride of having the nation's regional tourism community here in this city from yourself and your colleagues has been just, has been awe inspiring actually. Thank you. Um, that's a beautiful thing to say. Look, it's, um, it's pretty special. Uh, we host many conferences in Newcastle, um, but this one is, um, is pretty special. Um, and, you know, securing this conference against many other destinations, I think, is testament to the work that my team has done in the last three years to elevate Newcastle's visitor economy. And I, and I couldn't be prouder. I've worked with such a wonderful group of people. Um, we work in collaboration and in partnership with our industry. Um, and, you know, we have a wonderfully supportive council who invests in the visitor economy. It's, um, it's fantastic. I'm very privileged to do the job that I do. I did, Georgia, that labour of love is really, this is the fruits of that. Uh, and just even seeing with Ben and your relationship and just the way you talk and even on using platforms like LinkedIn about your team has been just fantastic to see. Something that has continuously come up in the conversations that I've had is just the growth in Newcastle. People haven't visited here for a long time and this convention has brought them back and they're all going, I can't believe how much it's evolved. Uh, now, tell me about that journey in bringing in the visitor economy and experience as a priority from a local government level. 
Yeah, sure. And there's probably, it's it's multi-layered, to be honest with you. So as our Lord Mayor mentioned yesterday, Newcastle has historically, we've had a really diverse visitor mix. So corporate travel um, happens organically, really, because of the size of our economy. Then we have business events. We've had a convention bureau for many years. And in fact, I think we were the first regional convention bureau in Australia. So um, we've had a really um, strong um, business events sector in Newcastle for many years. And obviously, we leveraged through that through the University of Newcastle, Hunting New England Health, Hunter Medical Research Institute. Um, and we've also invested heavily in events. So attracting visitation through leisure events, whether they're spectator or participatory. But in terms of Newcastle being positioned as a straight leisure destination, that is not a body of work we have embarked on. And and without sounding, um, oh goodness, well, without sounding complacent, I guess we haven't embarked on that. One, because we really haven't had to historically because our visitation mix has been so robust and we haven't relied on that holiday um, tourism or short break tourism. But our destination management plan really highlighted that that is our area for growth. Um, and, you know, it also coincided with a lot of investment from our state government. Um, the light rail, which I'm sure most delegates have been um, enjoying whilst they've been here at ART, the installation of the light rail has absolutely been fundamental to investment within our CBD. So prior to the light rail going in, it was a heavy rail corridor and it essentially split our CBD in two. When that opened up, um, investment flooded in through the work of the state government and local government advocating for that as well. And our council does a fantastic job at that. And then we've seen the likes of, you know, QT um, come to Newcastle, as well as Crystal Brook, the Kingsley, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, we have a, a thriving nighttime economy um, and culinary and the after dark has really taken off in Newcastle. So it's really been... It's been a long-term um, evolution, but we're there, um, which and it's absolutely brilliant, and we're reaping the rewards. And I, I'm always absolutely delighted when people come here for the first time, or they haven't been here for many years, when people say, "Oh my goodness, look at the change." That's been the highlight. That's been a theme, really, of bringing the bringing our people here um every conversation when we're talking about newcastle so congratulations to you and the wider team for that vision and really just putting yeah putting that into action now talking about the convention the thought leadership the conversations what have been some key takeouts for you from a professional development point of view from a professional development point of view i really think that ai um lens is really important and it's something that we really need to take on board through destination marketing, through how we deliver our services, through visitor information. Um, it's something that we need to start really proactively playing in um, and investing in because it really um, marries in with visitor experiences. Well, that makes me excited because I yeah, delivering that talk and just seeing how we can elevate our service when our human capital is limited how we can bring in these tools to deliver better service. I love it. That's a key takeaway. It is. And the other one is, which is really dear to my heart, um, it's in terms of talent attraction and retention. Um, and, you know, we do a, a lot of work with the University of Newcastle and we've all started, also started to work with the Department of Education, getting into secondary school at uh, years 9, 10 and 11 and working with those careers advisors so we can actually demonstrate to students the beyond the frontline career opportunities in the visitor economy because a lot of our um, young talent, they will start in hospitality while they're going through school. They may have a really poor experience and then they may say, I'm not interested in making a career out of the visitor economy. Um, so it's really important that we work hand in glove with the Department of Education so we're getting those um, students before they hit tertiary education so then they can take a long-term forecast of their career opportunities in the visitor economy because it's a fabulous sector. I've got two mics to drop double on that one. <laughs> drop the two mics. <laughs> You're just talking. You're funny. Talking language. your language. You're talking my yeah. language. 
it's something certainly yes it's it's not it's not a considered pathway we've all come i guess even oh, if we did we do do a survey how we all landed in korea it's a passion we had crushes on the world crushes on our community and we've landed here before our youth this is something i certainly think we need to explore more how we can get to the students and departments and the education piece earlier when i don't know what to do to put our industry forward that it's more than it's so much more absolutely it is so we've developed a great little training videos that's now used in some of the secondary schools here where we've interviewed um, many people from our sector who talk about their career path and it's really interesting you know i had a great conversation with kent warren who was the previous chair of newcastle tourism industry group and we and we were talking at length about this issue and it was quite interesting when we were when we were discussing you know when, when you talk to your careers advisors at school, the careers advisors will often ask you, well, what subjects are you tracking really well in? Um, and they look at it from a, what interests you from an intellectual perspective? And of course, the visitor economy is so diverse. And what we really need to be looking at is what your personality traits are. And back mm -hmm. to your point about passion, because if you actually enjoy working with people, and if that's fundamentally what makes your heart sing, then you can choose whatever career you want in the visitor economy. Yes. And we've often seen that as a weakness. It's not. It's an absolute strength. It is an absolute strength, a strength-based approach in that talent attraction and acquisition. What do you look for when you're hiring? What do you look for? What's, what's that like <laughs> beyond the resume? It's a vibe, isn't it? It's, sometimes you just can see it in someone and you have to love the people. It's an absolute vibe, you're right. <laughs> while, while sticking all of those yeah. mandatory things that are on a um, position description, it is a vibe. It's about cultural fit. And I also look, particularly with us in, in destination management, it's looking for people that are, I guess, interested in a holistic approach. And a holistic approach sounds really simplistic, but it is a lot of hard work to make sure that across government and with industry we are all working together and singing from the same hymn book and you need to be committed to that because it's a game of absolute inches and you need to be committed to the long game absolutely i would love i think from a from a art community even the work that you have already you've, you're leading the way and training videos through the department for careers i think that will be something that will be greatly share like if we can share that and get for others to get inspired to kind of look at that more broadly i think will be fantastic you're the woman for a reason that we, we've been waiting for to have this conversation thank you keep up the amazing work i think a, another continual uh, uh i guess sentiment that has come out of this i've got to come back with my family um, I know for myself personally, even just going for a walk and a run and dinner last night, you can just, like, we're all here on business, if you can call the industry that. I mean, <laughs> this is just as much leisure community with all our our, our humans of tourism, um, but a, a great place to come back with partners, with, with friends and, and with family. So uh, thank you for the opportunity and for hosting such an excellent conference in a really excellent destination. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And I look forward to welcoming you back when you come on Pure Leisure with your family. Pure Leisure. Thank you. And I, I, and I will thank you, everyone. This is Georgia Lazari from the city of Newcastle. And I look forward to having some more artful conversations uh, with other incredible leaders like our Jigil, Georgia, here. Thank you. And uh, see you soon. Welcome back, Katie Martha from Destination Kayama and South Coast Experiences. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for saying yes. Yes, I know. A new brave. live. Brave. It's brave, but we need to put Destination Kayama and South Coast Experiences on the map. Yes. Tell us, what do we need to know first about Destination Kayama? Well, it's in that magical two-hour window or under now of Sydney. So it's a um, pretty established tourism spot. Um, there are always amazing new things happening, though. Like we have so many festivals. Our um, events person, Sally, is just driving out the festivals that are really becoming nationally renowned. 
Um, our New Year's Eve is known across the nation as one of the best regional New Year's Eve. So um, definitely worthwhile coming for festivals and then lovely accommodation, beautiful coastal walks. Like there's a lot to be done in Kayama. Events for the visitor experience and visitor economy, it's just a perfect match, isn't it? Yeah. And more and more, but Kayama really driven that visitation through your events calendar which is great to see yeah yeah it's it's been um you know with the backing of destinations kayama and and then all the new innovative events organizers that are coming through with music festivals and then like i said the ones that kayama destinations kayama is running it's um it's just a jam-packed sort of program for the year nadia kate your baby, South yes. Coast Experiences, yes. tell me, as a clear destination ambassador for Kayama, tell me about your journey and the need to launch something that's very South Coast driven and highlighting the experience of your, your region. Okay, so yeah, it came off the back of my marketing and PR background and I was doing marketing and PR for a guest house in Jeringong, but became really successful within the campaign. And what we saw at the back of that was that the visitors who wanted to come and stay really wanted to have an itinerary built and created and designed. And it was very hard to for them to go out and actually have the time and the patience to go and find it, to find those different experiences, those, you know, passion projects that have been turned into experiences. So I went off the back of that and built South Coast Experiences that was itinerary based um and and now it's sort of morphed into another business that it's membership based business that members are either stays um their experience providers their bricks and mortar businesses all offering an experience and i can build itineraries or the visitor can go direct and book the experience or accommodation brilliant because this is that collaborative piece and just how important it is i mean Call it itineraries, call it a centralised packaged experience. Right? Yeah, and then, and I know we were talking about earlier, and I mean, Liz and I ran a session on artificial intelligence and chat GPT and how quickly we can kind of publish an itinerary. Mm. However, mm. however, is it a trusted source? And the answer, read the room everywhere. It's not. And this is where a localised yeah. experience and itinerary building yeah. is critical and important as a trusted authority. Yeah, so I, I think that's exactly right. And I mean, I think AI has an amazing place to play for sure. Um, but then having someone that's on the ground and knowledgeable and works with the business, more guests or more clients, customers to the members. Um, and so it's a win-win for everyone really. It's a win-win for everyone. It's a win-win that you came and joined me and shared your yeah, thank you for knowledge inviting and me. your passion. <laughs> uh, how have you found, that, is this your first time at, at yes. the Yeah, yeah. yeah it's Would me. you come back? Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, I've learned so much. I've made wonderful connections. Just really seeing what the industry does in that big space of Australian tourism and then drilling down to New South Wales. I mean, I work quite closely with the destinations as it is across my area, but um, just really see the value that's out there and the commitment and the passion and the drive across it is, has been really great. And the education, of course, like it's been, it's been really good. And so lucky it's kind of been in your full gym. Sort of. Yeah. yeah, like yeah. it's not too far. Yeah, no, you. no, it's an easy three and a half hour drive for me to get up here and um, I love Newcastle. Uh, I'll definitely be coming back. I haven't been here for quite a few years uh, and like just to see the innovative work of Newcastle and how they're really changing or have changed the whole sort of play around where they put the uni campus in the town to really encourage, you know, just sort of being observing all of that and seeing how inform and um, innovative it really is it's great yeah. it is great i did a share this morning and i did they're like if i could turn back time yeah and go back to uni and go somewhere yeah. like newcastle yeah. like what an experience that would be for exactly. students coming to study here yeah it's got a real vibe about it you know just seeing people skateboarding to their next destination is really cool too you know like the skateboarders yeah. that are out there I, we don't have that so much on the south coast um but you know the beautiful walks beautiful ocean waves it's just the harbour it's really gorgeous yeah. it is gorgeous so are you 
Thank you. Thank you. Let's go back. Uh, I'll let you go. Go and uh, and all the very yeah. best with South Coast experiences. Oh, thank you. And Destination Canada. Thank, thank you, you everyone so for much. joining and re watching the replay. Thank you. Hello and welcome back, everybody, to Newcastle to the Art Convention, and welcome to my special guest, Miran Ozoz from. Florio Peninsula Tourism. Well done. Yeah, you had Got it. Got it? Nailed it? Nice. Thank the you for having me. And Florio. Yes. Florio. It's a bit of a tongue twister. And recently moving from New South Wales, it took me a while as well. Um, you can also say FPT. Florio FPT. FPT is the place to be. Yeah. Now, beautiful Marin, this is your first time at the art convention. And you're also quite new to the whole regional marketing tourism so you've had a good tell us about your background yep where you were and how you've landed into Florida. yep um i was really fortunate to go and be a ski bum in canada for about you know one winter which turned into 10 years over there and living in Banff and lake louise the primary economy was tourism so fantastic opportunity to get involved and sort of work my way up learning all aspects of the DMO. So I worked for Banff and Lake Louise Tourism over there. Um, my sort of focus was in destination, visitor experience, events and managing visitor centres and providing an incredible experience for the yeah, guests into the destination. We had a lot of issues managing um, dispersal, traffic um, and I guess environmental impacts being inside a national park. So um, 2018, decided to sort of move back home and be closer to family and settle down. Um, and I was lucky to get a role with New South Wales National Parks. So I was based in Sydney, working for the sort of Sydney-based National Parks in a tourism and visitor experience manager role for the region. However, it's obviously an urban region. So that was a fantastic opportunity. Um, again, using my skills and expertise, but understanding a bit more of the Australian tourism landscape. And then, COVID happened and as with everyone, we were one of those families that just thought, let's just look, you know, we've always loved the Florida Peninsula and South Australia. We'd only visited a few times, but my husband and I sort of just said, if there's ever a job that comes up, let's just do it. Like, it's so nice, very livable, absolutely incredible experiences and quiet, um, yeah, just in incredible experiences and lifestyle in there. So very quickly after that discussion, he got a great job. So we packed up and moved. Um, I love that. It's it's similar. The man that has nailed what she said, and you're the perfect example. Create a place that people want to live, yes, and then the visitor will want to come and visit. And yeah, you've done that. Yeah, it's absolutely incredible. So we've been down there two years now, and still, I, I recently um, was appointed to this role as the exec officer for Florida Peninsula Tourism. I'm so honoured because it's an incredible region. It's such beautiful areas, lovely operators, and so much opportunity as well. Um, but still, every weekend, my husband, my kids, and I were out exploring and just experiencing what that region offers. So I haven't even got around to the rest of the regions yet. But there's so much to do in South Australia, and I think just having that fresh lens of being from New South Wales, where you just get caught up in like, oh, traffic, or oh, you do the same thing every weekend. It's a little bit can be a bit uninspiring or you sort of take it for granted just to put yourself in a completely different place not knowing anyone all our families in new south wales and just yeah exploring and taking that sense of adventure like pretty seriously it's incredible and it's a great fit for our lifestyle right now so loving it quintessential destination ambassador oh uh, yeah i love it yeah i mean there's not much not to love yeah everyone who goes there falls in love with it now, I'm curious, going back to being overseas, the international landscape of visitor servicing and what you're bringing back, and I'm curious, is it same, same or very different in mindset, in approach to what we are in Australia? What, like, yep. Have you noticed some key distinct differences or have you had learnings that you can bring back now into your leadership role with Inferior? Yeah, I think, um, well... I'll talk about the Flurio and where I was in Canada was a very particular region where we had big challenges managing congestion and also balancing the needs of the local community with, you know, the need for the tourism and visitor economy. So um, in the Flurio, we're sort of still in a growth phase where we're like, hey, we're down here, come check us out. We've got so much to offer. Whereas in Beth and Lake Louise, we we're more like, hey, maybe think about visiting at a different time of year because there's literally no hotel rooms. There's nothing possible for you to do except just fill the streets, have traffic challenges, no parking, 
you're going to be like impacting the wildlife because there's so many people getting up close to the bears and elks and that sort of thing. So different type of issue where that was managing um, congestion and trying to promote dispersal of visitors throughout the year. We do have, you know, an incredible amount of visitation over the summer in the Florida Peninsula. And one of our goals is to drive the dispersal to show people it's also a fab time to visit in the winter. Like incredible. Imagine the cellar door, the fireplace crackling and you're staying on a little hill just outside of McLaren Bell looking over the ocean. Like not hard to sell, but um, I guess there's still that opportunity for dispersal, but we don't have the congestion challenges. So um, there's that part of it. And then there's also the side of it where we, I think we've got an opportunity to just be more welcoming as a region. One of the things that's really resonated from this conference has been um, kind of the key message that visitors don't really care that four councils have different priorities, even though they're in one region. And, you know, there was a session, I can't remember, remember the lovely guy's name just there, but 51 councils in this region in Western Australia, the visitor does not care. They want to go to this destination because of how they perceive it, what they're, what's being sold to them as an experience that's offered. And I think that's something that I need to take back to our region and work on, just that bit more collaboration and cohesiveness. And we understand different councils have their own priorities, but we've got to put the visitor first in that tourism space and sort of provide a seamless experience for them as a region, not you guys want to do this and then down here there's different challenges, but what's our destination doing for the visitor and how can we best work together? That's a great key takeaway. And that was my next as the first time to this and a great time for you as yeah. being in, in this new role. Yeah. Uh, aside from that, which is an excellent takeaway, but regard, if, you know, we're all collaborating, but it's kind of with different remits. How can we centre that yeah. back to the visitor? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or visitor centricity mindset. Uh, what have been some other things and what, you know, what would you recommend when you go back to your region? What will you be saying to them about this experience over these last couple of days? Yeah, great question. Well, I think you usually come to a conference like this and it's fantastic networking and you walk away sort of uplifted and positive. It's been brilliantly in my face at this conference that there's been some hard truths and some hard facts about the current, I guess, economic outlook um, and visitor insights and trends. And it was really good to hear that so that we can realise our role as a regional tourism organisation in sort of being that leader for the destination in driving that momentum going forward and relaying the reality of the current challenges in the economy to those small operators and the big operators to help them maintain that momentum until we get through the challenges and I guess persevere to that acceleration stage as DNSW would say. So I think we're all sort of talking about we've come out of COVID, that was a great bubble for us as a region. Um, now things are picking up, borders are opening, but we're just hearing the facts um, that there is a few more sort of challenges potentially to ride out. So I'll be taking back to my region just some need for a bit of critical thinking and some strategic, um, I guess, work to look at what we can do to maintain momentum for our region and support our operators to ride out this way. So good. Riding out the way, a good segue to Newcastle. <laughs> We ran across each other this morning. Yeah. We're so proud of ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> We're running along the water. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Have you been so, I mean, we're in Sydney, just a Newcastle experience. Yeah. Well, I feel here. like I've been here years ago. I'm just loving it. It's, I've, got, I've got a few friends here that I've caught up with, and I just feel like the city has changed. Uh, but that was just an incredible way to start the day this morning. Everything's so close. So, Five minutes, you're down on the Esplanade, little run, out with the masses, feeling part of the community. Incredible sort of sunrise spot. It's a beautiful spot. And I passed as a mum now, I passed one of the hotels, had a little train set um, and a water slide. I'm like, yeah, I'm coming back with the kids. I can see them having fun and me relaxing. So, yeah, it's, it's been better than expected, actually. Yeah. Better than expected. Yeah. A bit like when I came to your wood and now here. It's like yeah. inspiration for those family holidays. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely. yeah. I am so happy that I've seen you again yeah, here. Congratulations for all the great work that you're doing. I love your key takeaways. And I and it's great. We have definitely had the thoughts provoked and poked. Yeah. There have been hard truths. 
but how we can practically take them back into our little patches now is going to be the that's when we roll up our sleeves thank you for saying yes to this and all the very best and uh yeah. peninsula tourism and meron ozos 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 oh, the ozos. <laughs> nearly, nearly there i've got a fluru fluru is where i went <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for listening. We'll be back with some excellent uh, thought leaders and artful ch chats like Marin. Hello and welcome to day two here in the beautiful city of Newcastle. And with me, welcome back again to Art and to a live broadcast, our wonderful Book Easy leader, Forbes Jamison, hello. Thank you very much for having me again. It's wonderful to be back. You do look different a little bit this year for anyone that's seen the videos. We're, we're lacking a moustache this year. Yeah. There was a strategic decision made to go down a, a different avenue. Yes. And uh, we're, we're seeing where that leads. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. So how are things at Book Easy? A lot has changed catching up with you recently at the Victorian Information Services Summit. Uh, do you want to share with everyone the, you know, some some new changes with the platform, with yourself? How's the, how have you been the last 12 months? Yeah. Well, when we spoke last time, it was... Um, we were still in the midst of the, you know, general bounce back for the destinations. And so they were normalizing a lot of their operations and we were seeing the emergence of some really cool trends which have continued to extrapolate, if you will. Um, and so, you know, we've seen things like nature tourism bounce back very hard and stay strong. People wanting to get out in nature, go camping, caravanning, uh, that kind of thing. And on the back of that, we continue to see the, the local and the state governments continue to upgrade their systems to allow um, for visitors to you know take advantage of those services in a modern way um, which has been you know absolutely fantastic it's fantastic for the destinations it's fantastic for the states and most of all it's fantastic for the travelers um, and then you know we, we've seen sort of you know that return to normal for the destinations in general so that would be you know the visitor centers and the visitor servicing um, that's continued to develop along those kind of lines as well. They're beginning to invest in their own infrastructure and, you know, bring out a whole lot of um, new, uh, new, a new approach to visitor servicing, which has been really great to see. Excellent. Now with, uh, you know, Newcastle last year was your first? Yes. Historical, your yep. first Australian Regional Tourism Conference and, and, and convention. Uh, and now we're, we're welcome back to Newcastle. How have you found your Newcastle experience? Um, I have been very pleasantly surprised. Um, I know, you know, maybe five or ten years ago this was transitioning from, you know, what would have traditionally been a very industrial city, and you're beginning to see sort of the, the outshoots of, um, of, of that old uh, that, that old infrastructure and some of those, you know, classic buildings being repurposed for modern uses. Um, and it's been fantastic. The food scene, excellent. Uh, the bar and nightlife scene is excellent. And the, the general surrounds are, are wonderful. So I've had a very pleasant time here. It has been. First yeah. time? This Have is my been, first time First time yeah. to Newcastle. Newcastle, yes. I've been the same. I mean, yeah. I came a long, long time ago for an industry funny. Now, for any Newcastle operators and destinations and regional tourism organisations who don't know about book easy but further to that don't really um, haven't gone down that path or thinking about that path of conversion and booking capability um what are the key things or what's a good starting point for them to know yeah perfect so for most of the destinations they will at least be if they aren't doing this already they're, they're probably on their way to doing it but they usually start with a membership program because part of their remit is obviously to support local businesses develop and part of that is you know the, the, the tourism part of that and so most destinations will have invested in simple things like a website perhaps a visitor information center and perhaps they have some staff who are dedicated to economic development um, and so the natural progression for them doing that development work on behalf of those oper operators um, you know the natural progression in that is usually around giving them the tools that are necessary to um, you know be a successful business in the 21st century and so that can be things like booking systems, it can be things like using social media, it can be things like leveraging existing local platforms and infrastructure for their business. And the next thing that the visitor centre can do is of course promote those businesses in a way where people can make a booking for them on their own website, in their visitor centre, 
and um, in any other capacity they may do. A lot of destinations will run something like a museum or yeah. they'll be running their own caravan yeah. park or something like that. And so we're just one, we're obviously a, a small piece of the, of the wider puzzle, lots of tools for people to use. Um, but the reason why you'd, you'd, you'd come to us is because you want to um, promote your members and your local operators on your own digital infrastructure. You want to give your visitor center staff the tools um, to you know, commercialize and to promote those members at the same time. Because as we all know, um, the ability for uh, local tourism efforts to self-fund or partially self-fund, it's, it's always a hot issue. Um, and so that's, that's where we come in. We give the guys those tools to take their promotion to the next level, but also to commercialize and make the booking experience for their visitors better. So yeah. we're kind of in the middle helping, trying to assist all parties. What I got also got excited about when I heard you and Chris speak recently, Forbes, was this also this, I mean, it's all about connectivity, community, all the good stuff, that, a lot of, you know, that, mm -hmm. that um, cross-pollination, yeah. I had to get that, that <laughs> gold that you shared last year. <laughs> Um, but also this e-commerce capability that Book Easy is now launching into of not only showcasing experience but local product and produce that can be, you know, because a lot of visitor information centres are coming into that retail space and that now we have an e-commerce solution that's coming, it's been developing and is, is something to look forward to. Am I yeah. correct in that? Did I capture that? Yeah, so this has been a... Um um, a highly desired piece of functionality for a while and we're still in the the um, very early stages so we're not, not promising anything super quick you're doing uh, an ATDW yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're not we're, we're not going to rebrand um, yeah. but I'm not I'm also not committing to anything yeah. um, um, so uh, book easy at the moment has its own uh, point of sale retail systems so that's built in so you can do your third party bookings and your retail bookings as part of the same itinerary process it as a transaction the same there's a few bolt-on things that we've been able to do on websites where we've been able to integrate um, a, uh, a retail system so that somebody can seamlessly make a booking on your website without having to leave for a piece of retail product that you have. Probably further on down the line, that will be integrated properly with BookEasy. And that um, that's a bit of a game changer. And it's it, I don't want to say categorically because this is always... Um, uh, you know the retail offerings in various spaces are always different but um, many many destinations have been incredibly successful promoting local product which is it's a win-win for everyone it's it's a way that they can have a competitive advantage and offer something unique to the visitor you know gone are the days where you're just going to get a fridge magnet or something from the yeah. visitor center like my grandparents did um, and you know Visitor centers and destinations are branching out into things like, you know, alcoholic beverages. Some of them have a license to sell that. Um, local um, meats, jerkies, berries. Um, you know, some places are famous for their cakes and cupcakes. Some places are, are, are mining communities and they've got, you know, pieces of bauxite that you can buy in a little case. So um, the possibilities are really endless for them to do that. And the commercialization part of that so being able to fund a significant portion of your operations to a retail operation, it really shouldn't be underestimated. Um, and so that's another one of those things that we're trying to push as part of a wider effort to, um, you know, try and start the conversations with the destinations around commercialising more, having a deeper offering for the visitor and for their operators. It's so exciting because even from a retention or return or... You know, I, I, recently when I was in in a Victorian region and I just thought well I would love to like you think Christmas is coming up even from that retail e-commerce like I want to be able to purchase produce I might not be able to visit but we can still have this relationship with retention or exactly yeah continue that um that I guess association with the destination through produce which is why agritourism and everything that we talk about is is so important. It's absolutely, exciting. absolutely, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Anything else you'd like to share about your art experience this year? Conversations that you've been having in the last day and a bit. Um, you know, what are you finding? What's been a highlight? And what would you say to those that aren't here? that might have some FOMO, might be considering, I really should put that on my agenda next year. What are they missing out on? 
Right. So the, the first, there are about yeah, three the, questions. Yeah, in that. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so your first point there about um, what's been great about this particular conference, and I've been seeing it as a little bit of a trend across the states, is that there's a bit more of a um, constructive conversation about what the role of the visitor center should be, um, and this is something that we at Bookeasy have been passionate about for a number of years is about trying to um, convey the message that the role of the visitor center needs to become more expansive than it usually than it, it might have traditionally been in many places and so yesterday there was a great talk between a number of people running first-rate visitor centers across Australia and they've all been putting forward their vision of what the visitor center should be and I think that's fantastic that's an opportunity for people to take the best practices of multiple different regions and then repurpose it for themselves. Yes. And I think that is invaluable. That kind of feeds into your, sec your second question there about what people might be missing if they're not if they're not um, attending one of these, maybe you know every couple of years or whatever it might be, is that the opportunity to come here and meet very smart, very talented, very driven people who have divergent views about um, you know what visitor services should be this is a key, key opportunity for you to come in and meet, like, you know, some of the leading minds um, who are who are in this space. And it's obviously very niche and um, and and interesting. But um, you know, th that's a, that's a key takeaway. There's obviously you know updates from the likes of you know the, the company that used to be known as ATDW and um, various various other key players in the industry. And it's always great to see what they're doing and what's coming down the pipeline. Um, and finally, you know, this is tourism. This is a relationship business. And so the the opportunity to come in, meet people, shake hands, hug, um, you know, that, that that can't be replaced. So I couldn't Call them by it. their surname. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've been calling him Jamison Feather for the last day. It's all about the, it's all about the, the inside best. jokes. So, the inside yeah. jokes. Yeah. So I love what you shared and I love that session, like the case studies. Yeah. And that's another thing. There's just so many different conversations and, and learned uh, shared learnings um and it was interesting with Mudgy, i think it was yes. Mudgy yesterday yes. was saying they actually actively said no digital and they've been on a journey and now kind of going down this pathway and introducing because we're seeing well when it comes to service yeah it's not about yeah that there's a disconnect if we're not connecting in this way in the way the consumer so i thought that was a really good takeaway and i and i'd actually like to applaud them for that i mean yeah. it takes a lot of um chutzpah to uh, try to chart your own course but also the um the flexibility to recognize when maybe a little bit of a change needs to happen yes um it also invaluable because we're all always changing always adapting to what's happening uh, and it's great to see. Uh, thank you for all of your support. And it's great to have you here as a, as a key trade partner. And um, so pleasure. I'll let you go to have some more chats and hugs and uh, and bucks <laughs> um, uh, and uh, all the best for the year ahead and beyond. Thank, thank you, you very folks. much. And thanks for having me. My absolute pleasure. Thanks, everyone. We'll be back soon with another great Artful Conversation. Hi there, everyone. It's lunch hour. It's a bit busy behind us. But I've got the wonderful Scott Taylor from Guru Productions. Thank you for saying yes and dropping by to visit me here at I, Art. I couldn't say no. Hanging out with <laughs> a wonderful Despina. Um, I mean, what else are we going to do? <laughs> Scott, Guru Productions. Now, you are very used to being in front of the camera, introducing to the world destinations and experiences through your TV production. Can you tell us a little bit about Guru Productions and sure. what you do? Yeah, sure. Guru Productions, we're based in Western Australia, but we've got film crews at all times all over this wide brown land and also all over the globe. So at any one time, we've got between three and eight crews out in the field. And whether that's, um, you know, uh, lobster fishing in Nova Scotia or uh, meeting the sand people in deepest Africa or hanging out in uh, Marimbula, catching some oysters. Uh, we're out telling compelling stories collaboratively with uh, the tourism organisations that uh, want to get this story out to not only Australia, but the rest of the world. Fantastic. Now, something, now I relate this back to a show like I'm from Victoria, something like Postcard. Sure. On commercial, we're talking commercial. Yeah, networks that's exactly right there is a slight difference with uh with what we do so each episode 
specifically tells the story of one region that we do collaboratively with that regional organisation. As an example, we might work with Access Canberra and we do a specific six or seven story episode that relates directly to that one region and it gives us the opportunity to create a multi-layered tapestry so we've got people's attention for 30 minutes and we can tell the story about history and culture we can talk about food and wine we can talk about innovation and great places to see it gives us an opportunity to work really collaboratively to ensure we understand what the messaging is for each of those tourism organizations and make sure that we put our creative spin on it to clearly elucidate those messages for the viewing public in Australia right away across the nine networks. So it's across all nine, Channel 9 channels, Australia-wide. So there's three um, rollouts, if you like, and the first rollout is here, Terrestrial TV on Channel 9 in Australia, and that's anywhere between 600 and 900,000 views, and that's the first iteration. The second rollout happens internationally, uh, as an example, at the moment, we're, our agent in New York has got the varied shows, including Destination Australia, including Explore TV in 160 countries at the moment. So we're in all the Baltic states, we're in uh, right through the Middle East, and, you know, you can log on and see my stupid face. <laughs> I'm glad they didn't ask that before we started. It's all quite intimidating from a little production here. Oh, yeah, no, it's, it's silly. impressive. Yeah, it's so impressive. Now, my thinking goes into content, whether it's from a destination, any any, any kind of show you're doing for an operator with my operator hat on, that would be incredible content. Yeah, yeah totally. That's Well, first of all, the, the we only accept world-class content, and that's that's on us. So... The teams, the equipment that we that we use, there's no handheld devices. It's uh, you know, it's all the proper gear. Um, Guru Productions has been uh, in operation for 23 years. We produce north of 120 episodes of TV, each with six or seven stories. So from a quality point of view, it's Channel Nine quality. It's Prime Video um, uh, uh, streaming service quality. The expectation is with the reach that we get. Um, there's there's no gap between us and the and you know the very best that you could expect. So from a quality point of view of delivery production value, it's super 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 high. We have uh, we work collaborative, collaboratively to generate the appropriate content to make sure that the messaging is absolutely clear and taking nothing away from uh, you know some of the other uh, travel shows or food and travel shows that are out there. I think that's our key point of difference that in that 30 minute time slot. We tell six or seven stories about one region and ensure that we, each tourism organization has got their own key marketing points, their key demographics that they want to hit. And we sit down and work through it and make sure that everything that we do ticks as many of those boxes as we um, as we possibly as we possibly can. Absolutely brilliant. Well, you're in the right place. I mean, we're, we've got, we're showcasing the best of regional Australia yeah. uh, here at yeah. the convention. For anybody interested in working with you, uh, what would be the best place uh, of contact and uh, you know, how do they engage you? How sure. do they put themselves forward? Well, what I might do, if it's okay with you, uh, to spin, we can put my contact details up, up on here. Yes. I've also, I've probably got a, I've probably got a cute little one or two minute sizzle on my laptop that we can sort of send out, which will give uh, oh, people, we'll people share a bit of an idea. Share in the comments afterwards, so. we'll exchange and give the information. Yeah, yeah so it's a, it's a, it's a great, project that we do it's um this is an exercise and we're just kind of coming to the place where all of the clients that we work with uh, are here uh, we're booking late 24 and 25 so we've got things like um ecotourism discover australia uh we're doing uh, a wine oriented uh, a wine oriented series of eight episodes where we're going from we're going to do the yarra we're doing um where else are we doing uh, adelaide hills uh, Mug River, Mug River, I'm a West Aussie, big Mug River <laughs> Shardy fan. And yeah, working closely with those either regional tourism organisations or even the local tourism operators. It's it's interesting because we're at such a large scale. Uh, the cost base is really achievable, even for a local tourism organisation. So we get companies like the Mug River and Bustleton Tourism Organisation, or department that we work pretty closely with, and 
once we film the episode of six or seven stories, there's unlimited free access to to plus all of the all of the B roll plus a socials package that supports it. So we don't normally have to sell anything. Usually, people that we talk to just go, "Holy cow, that's really yeah, yeah great, yeah. sign me up." So yeah. um, so yeah, so we're we're going through and building some really interesting um, nuances on just the simple destination Australia model. Yeah, and looking looking forward to um, oh, so good. you know getting getting out there and oh, I can't wait for the wine thing this week. Yeah. I'm really I'm really excited. Well, I can't wait I, I, to, to check out more about what you do. Cool. I'll drop in the comments more information for people to check out and uh, just great to connect with you. Thank you. Before you get off. Thank you for making yeah. uh, the time. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Hello, everybody, and welcome back here. I am with the fabulous Liz Ward from Tourism Tribe. So wonderful to see you again, Liz. Hi, darling. How are you? I'm excellent now that I'm sitting here with you to do our first live interview for the day. And what better person to do it with than my tourism sister, uh, Liz Ward. Now, Liz, Tourism Tribe, we've certainly been on a journey together. Tell us the journey that Tourism Tribe has been on in the last six months and all of the amazing work that you're doing in industry centered around data intelligence and what we're going to speak about together today later on this afternoon uh, artificial intelligence the lead magnets tell us a little bit about how you're supporting and uh, and contributing to our industry thanks desi look i haven't seen a change like we are experiencing in 2023 since the birth of say e-commerce were tourism operators. If we think back 10, 15 years, we really wanted operators to get an online booking system, have a website, understand what an OTA was, understand what Google was and how to search it and optimize it. And then we the rise in social media and it much stayed the same. It was about getting it implemented, doing it better. But with the rise of artificial intelligence and the knowledge that has been an awareness that has been switched on through the in- incredible, unprecedented growth of a uh, tech tool with being chat GPT and the ability, the accessibility to low cost marketing automation, email marketing automation, and then the rollout of Google Analytics score, the convergence of the, these three technologies, AI, automation, and analytics, we've not seen anything like this before. This is the game changer. And there is one message that we are really trying to communicate to the industry at a regional tourism level, at a government level, at an operator level, is that things have changed and we have to adapt. We have to adapt with this new technology to take advantage of the opportunities and to see competitive um, online and be competitive generally in what we do. The barn has been absolutely raised when it comes to how we do our marketing and how well we can service our customers, both for information and inspiration, for service itself, for that human touch service. Through automation and AI, this has been absolutely changed. And we've got to now raise the bar ourselves and our companies, in our cultures, in our governance models, in our processes, in our marketing to be able to catch up and get on the front foot, really catching up. I think this, as a tourism industry, we can get on the front foot. We, you know, because there's, there's issues of um, question marks over how do I use this by the consumer, there's issues of trust. So we can get ahead for once. If we do, if we really pay attention to these opportunities now, we could actually get to where the customer needs us to be before they fully get there. Oh. Whereas we've always been trailing behind, yes. you know. So yes. And it's been interesting this morning at the art convention, ART convention, has been um, all the talk on the floor about AI. So people are dropping, wanting to have conversations about what does it mean? We're coming to your and Desi's presentation because we want to understand it better. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's lots of question marks over it. And... I, I see, I see the reasons for the question marks, but I just see the opportunities and 
those people have tapped into using tool like ChatGPT to save themselves time and the work that they do, they're all over that. They understand. Yes. And that's just a, that is just a toe in the ocean yeah. in terms of the opportunities. And I know that with that presentation this afternoon, you're going to touch on things that get into that heavy, you know, that heavy labor, labor some work of, of, you know, delivering our services and also just giving really fantastic custom service, which is a hallmark of a great destination and businesses um, and how you can use AI tool to take the pain and the yeah. time out of that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's a remarkable time that we're going through because I haven't seen a change like this for 15 years. Yeah. Well, uh, it's exciting. I get excited when I see you excited. And as someone, I mean, talking about time, and I guess for anybody in the industry that doesn't know this, this great woman, uh, ATDW founding CEO. So you have really been at the forefront to see digital transformation. And more than that, it's evolution, isn't it? We're continuously evolving with this change, which is why I guess we all gather here at art to, to connect and share and exchange. Correct. Speaking of, of that, key takeaways, data is a big, big thing and the analytics side yes, of things yes. and the insights that we have access. Oh, give me the mic. Give me the <laughs> mic. I can't wait for our presentation. Please do. I'll say one thing. I, I think the other big, take out for me about the world we're operating in now is if you can't measure what you're doing in a marketing and distribution sense, just stop, would you? Would you just doing it and take a step back and start to understand the purpose of analytic data that you have free access to, to be able to not only measure the return on investment of your acquisition, whether that's through your social media efforts or, you know, you're updating your ATDW listing and you've got it sitting on some great platform like Australia.com and your state tourism organisation, you know, your word of mouth, have all those acquisition coins. What about the journey through the website? You know, can you... If you've got marketing activities that are going on, they're all, all the effort that you put into your hot up pages on your website and setting up campaigns and running campaigns, if you aren't measuring that and setting some goals against it and then making decisions off the back of what those reports are saying, then you're only doing half of your job. Yeah. And that's been some of the amazing work that our team has been doing, has been working individually with tourism operators and some association marketing organisations to help them do that. And it's making a big difference because now they're not just, you know, throwing some paint at the wall and hoping it sticks. They're actually taking a bit more of a scientific approach. And this is, this is the world we're living in that we yeah. have to incorporate into our marketing. And the other great work that the team's been doing, and I particularly would like to make a shout out to um, Destination New South Wales. Um, we've had individual product operators come to us, but Destination New South Wales put 100 operators through a lead generation program where they, these operators create using AI, using Canva, low cost email marketing automation system. They set up lead generation on their website. It was a beautiful lead magnet. The collaboration, the approach in terms of promoting the destination and putting their own flavor on it as to what you can do in the destination really in their niche and creating this beautiful lead magnet that can then start to establish a nice segmented database and be able to have some email marketing nurturing sequences. This is this is a big shift in yeah. these businesses. And DNSW um, got us to run a program for hundred operators in New South Wales, and the results, the beautiful lead magnets they have created using AI and Canva is something to behold. And that, most of them would have said, "Oh, I can't do that at the beginning of it," but they're all over it. Oh, fantastic work! And speaking of that, there's a great, uh, can we talk about it? Yeah, it has oh, been yeah. But we can, it, it, you you first. In the next hour. Yes, yes. Uh, if you t uh, tell us about the collaboration and the partnership on uh, that uh, that is soon to be launched. Yes, well, ART, of course, over the last few years has have played a role in implementing education tools and forces for the industry. 
And so we worked with them um, to turn on with ART for their financial members an affiliate um, discount. So we, we're partners, Tourism Tribe and ART are now partners for Discounted Access to Tourism Tribe's Digital Academy, which is into our supported online courses, which teach you about AI or lead nurturing or analytics or just the fundamentals, getting the fundamentals right. Um, all of that is really well supported with help, um, group coaching sessions on a fortnightly basis that operators can join. They can also purchase one-on-one -on -one coaching at a discount. They can get a digital engagement health check. They can join one of our fast track programs on lead generation, analytics. So it's, it's a good service and it's something that where ART and Tourism Tribe are aligned with trying to enable the industry with some more knowledge and really practical learning. Yeah. It's practical. Yes. So I'm excited about that. Yes. And so that gets launched today. Wonderful. Well, congratulations. Thanks. Uh, thank you for stopping by to run our first live interview. Uh, so thank you to everyone on LinkedIn and on Facebook for joining us. Any parting words for those that aren't here, why they should prioritise this art convention as a key conference next year. Do you know one of the standout things about this conference for Amy is how welcoming the delegates are. I never see anyone left for more than a few seconds standing on their own. This is a very family feel conference mm -hmm. where you feel part of your tourism community. Everyone's in regional tourism. Your tribe is very clear and you're made to feel part of it. Um, and so that can, connection that you can have with other people, that's where the magic happens in yeah. terms of the learning, shared experience. Yeah, it's great. And this, look, the, the, the program this year is really punchy. Uh, look, but I think, honestly, the great reason is to come and and meet your colleagues across Australia and be part of the conversation. Yes. And that's a wrap on this special throwback episode of the Tourism Hub podcast. I hope you enjoyed revisiting these insightful conversations from some of the most passionate and innovative minds in Australian regional tourism. A big, huge congratulations again to Melissa, our golden ticket winner. I can't wait to see you and I can't wait to see everyone attending the 2024 art convention in Mackay next week. For those of you listening and watching and can't make it, stay tuned for more exciting, artful, inspired podcasts and interviews that we'll be sharing from Mackay. A huge thank you to our sponsors, our first sponsors, our, the Australian Regional Tourism Network for making this episode and our partnership possible. You'll find all the information about the Australian Regional Tourism Network in the show notes as well as their almost newly launched learning platform. And guess what it's called? Second drum roll. Tourism Hub, I know, meant to be. As always, thank you to our listeners and watchers for tuning in and supporting regional tourism, not just in Australia, but across the globe. Until next time, my beautiful tourism brothers and sisters, stay inspired and keep exploring the incredible beauty within our nation's regions, within yourself, within your teams, and what we need to do to not only share them, but protect and preserve. Until next time, my friends, I'm Despina Karatsias, and you're listening to the Tourism Hub podcast. Relax. Relax.